Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, just wanted to let you know version 1.2.0 is headed to the store now. And uh, just wanted to give you a brief overview of all the new features. First thing you're probably going to see, there's a new button there, Needle Trainer. Um, I'm going to skip that real quick. I'm going to go to the settings. You're going to see a reset on open. If I keep that highlighted on, it's going to work the same as what you're used to. So, for instance, if I close this, you'll see that is just going to reset. If I toggle this to the off position and I do the same thing, now I can go back in. And in order to reset, I'll have to manually do it. For instance, hitting... Uh, uh, basically just using the copy over feature. So I can basically just go 9.1 if that's the wind or 3.2. Uh, we're just going to use a copy over feature. If you were to turn that off and you'll see everything else works very similar with the wind assist tool that you'll be able to use. Other than that, uh, let's jump right into the needle simulator. So the first thing that you're going to see is there's going to be a club type. Driver, wood, long iron, short iron, wedge, rough iron. You'll also see rough iron second cut and sand wedge. So the difference between rough iron and rough iron second cut, basically the first primary cut of the rough iron is anything that's touching the fairway. So if it's the closest surface to the fairway, then it's going to be a rough iron shot. It actually has a slower needle. So you're going to see that the timing is a little bit different. So that's why you'll see that there's two different cuts there. Other than that, you'll see all the tours and you'll see Rookie Pro, Expert and Master as well added in below there. You'll also see every ball type in the game up until this point released right in here that you'll be able to select. Each ball has its own unique timing. If you haven't seen Golf Clash Notebook, the numbers displayed are telling you how many passes in one exact second. So, for instance, if I'm looking at Quasar Ball, there's one and one third passes in one second. So that is the number that you're seeing displayed. So you'll see that the better balls, for instance, like a Kingmaker ball, you'll see, and this is a Kingmaker X, which is also a better ball, 1.15. That means that, you know, one pass plus an extra 15 tenths, 15 hundredths of a second uh, in one second. Uh, so it'll make that many passes. 1.15 passes in one second. So the slower that is, the better that it is. You'll also see things like turbo, for instance, which will have the fastest needle timing. You'll see very much different. And you'll see that the, the needle, you know, represents that when you're actually going to use it. So keep in mind that every club type has a different needle speed. Also, you'll also see that the graphics of this look, uh, you know, a little bit different than the game does. That's because we're using all our own original artwork. We didn't want to copy anything that um, Golf Clash is doing, so that's why it looks different. It's basically just so we can separate ourselves from the app, from their app, and have a different look and use all our own imaging as opposed to, you know, infringing upon anything that they're doing. We're not affiliated with them and we want to just be perfectly clear with this tool um, because there's not anything similar like that out there. Next thing you're also going to see is the percentage which is basically an approximation, but it's a listed in the bottom. This is going to be used as a trainer tool. So for instance, if I was to put this ball towards the top of the circle, you can see it's close to maybe 98%. If I'm able to pull it close to the bottom of the circle like this, 
you'll see maybe like 1.14-ish. And you'll see that it also starts to shake the bullseye very similarly to what you see in game. This is going to show you the importance of actually being in the center of the circle. So here you can see the center. And you'll see that, you know, adding on an extra half percent, you know, that's going to, you know, let's, let's just think about this. So if we're talking about a driver, 1% is 2.4 yards on Apocalypse 5. So half a percent would be an additional 1.2 yards. So it's very significant that you're somewhat accurate with where you put this. So that's why we have it displaying like this. So you can actually see how important that is um, to actually set that in the center of the circle. Aside from that, you're going to see that you know, as I mentioned, all the balls are listed here. You'll see a restore feature. So if I was to leave and use this door in the bottom, and let's just say hypothetically I was to close the app down, go back in, you know, every time that I open this, it's going to restore the last driver type, the last tour type, and the last ball type. You'll also see that, you know, the max that you can do is roughly 177% which is essentially more or less exactly how much you can overpower anything. You're also going to see that these values in this tool, they're going to be pretty much accurate to the max club value. We've noticed that this is a function of distance. What that means is that the max speed timing and the min speed timing of the same club type. So if I use a driver at min, you're going to see a different needle speed. But it's very, very small. A very, very small change that you'll see. So if I was to take Apocalypse and I was to use the needle speed at max versus the needle speed at min, you're going to see maybe three hundredths of a second difference. So it's going to be very, very small but it is a difference. Our tool is basically accurate to max club values. We didn't, you know, try to break it down too much. With that being said, you know, shots like overpower, stuff like that, they're not going to have any value at kind of mid club because why would you overpower a mid club shot? You just wouldn't do that. So do keep that in mind. You know, if I was to go to wedge, for example, and just overpower this, this is based on the max club line in the event that you needed to use it. And once you release, you can see it's going to be, you know, it'll, it'll give you a value based on your release timing. The next thing that I want to bring up, as you can see with the graphics, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, you're also going to see that the way that the needle passes is a little bit different than actually in game. So do keep in mind, this is just a trainer tool. Um, we have, you know, the, the easiest way to describe this, if you've ever played Golf Clash and like paid attention to the way that their needle moves, it's kind of almost on interval notation. And what I mean by that is there's distinct points on the screen that the needle can stop. So you'll usually see that it just kind of overpasses and might, you know, kind of glitch to the next click point. Um, and the easiest way to look at that is on the bullseye. You'll see that it kind of lands on the corner of every target on the bullseye. Ours doesn't do that. It's actually, um, you know, one of the things that we noticed is there's something artificial in place making Playdemics do that. It's actually very easy to get a fluid needle and it's something that we can do very simply, which means that Playdemic is doing something very complicated, complex, to make perfect ball timing harder to do. You're not going to see that ours does that. So with that being said, you will have maybe just a little bit easier ability to catch perfect balls, for instance. It's because our, our needle is much more fluid. We're having you know, a little bit of complications being able to replicate the actual movements because what 
Playdemics does is it's almost basically something uh, artificial in place there that's making it kind of skip a beat, for instance, just to kind of trick the players into getting just a little bit harder timing. You'll see that ours basically stops instantly. It's very easy to code what the way that we did it, which is, which is essentially fluid. The needle can stop at any point. It's on a continuous number line. Okay, so basically it's not going to just stop at these distinct points 1, 2, 3, 4. It could stop at 1.01. .01. It could stop at 1.02. It can stop on basically a continuous scale. And, you know, there's no set limit to, to the way that you can stop the needle timing. So with that being said, you will see just slight differences in the functionality. Um, we're going to do the best that we can to basically, you know, set up something to try to, in the future, be able to replicate what they're doing a little bit better. But it's also a very difficult, challenging solution to do because, as I mentioned, they're doing a lot of extra things to make it happen. Because, as I mentioned, you know, having the needle be fluid, it's extremely easy to do. It's, it's, it's really not overly complicated to do what we're doing. But what you'll see is you'll see that the timing, for example, of our tour, you know, if whatever tour you're in, whatever club you're in, um, and I've tested all of these, whether it's full overpower or it's the 100%, you're going to see it accurate up to about maybe 0 0.02, 0 0.03 per second. So we're talking about maybe 1 50th, 1 30th of a second difference. So it is going to be very accurate. So what that tells you, if you were to do side-by-sides of the driver, of the wood, whatever it is, if you were to do that, um, you're going to see that our timing is very similar to the actual, uh, you know, and, and kind of visually as well. You'll see that the bullseye shakes very similarly. Uh, the needle jumps around kind of on an ellipsis, very, very similar to what Playdemix does. The only difference being is that you're not going to be able to just stop on those discrete points like Playdemic. So do keep that in mind when you're using the tool. With that being said, tomorrow I'm going to try to put together some more in-depth tutorials for you guys to use on that, just so you can start to hone in on that a little bit better. But let me move on to the next big update, which is going to be in the tournaments or courses section. So either or, you're going to see that the functionality, whether it's a skin course, it really doesn't matter what I select. You'll see if I choose a hole, you're going to see a new info button on the bottom right hand corner. When I go in, you're going to see the guides uh, with the YouTube logo, and you're also going to see club suggestions now. So now every hole in the game is going to have a basically detailed list of ranking your clubs based on T-Box. So you'll see. And another thing, you'll also see that certain ones are highlighted. So you'll see that these are kind of dark colored on the woods. It's because that's pretty much the only thing that you're ever going to use on this. And you'll see that the sniper has a little bit of a favoritism uh, for that particular shot. If I move to the front tee box, you'll see, you know, in terms of irons, which irons are the best. And similarly with the woods, uh, with the from the from the rear, you'll see that the you know the woods start to re-fix themselves, and also the drivers as well, because length starts to come in. Every hole in the game has this. Also, every bag has this as well. So if I was to switch the bags up, you're going to see that these numbers keep twe tweaking, and you'll see that the clubs keep upgrading themselves. As to which is best. Now, the biggest thing that I want to point out to you guys is any difference, which is say two to five points, it's not going to be life shattering. So here you can see Cataclysm 7, Guardian 8, Sniper 10, Hammerhead 7, they're all in the same range. They're a 
basically all within a point. Don't sweat that out. If the point system is close, that means the clubs are essentially equal. However, if I was to switch bags to something that, you know, might not be as, um, you know, good of a clubs, and you're going to see the point separation start to start to deviate a bit more. So here you might see that Sniper 7 is the best club. You're going to see that maybe the Cat next, maybe the uh, Guardian as third. However, you know, again, so Guardian 4, Cat 5, or Cat 2, it's going to be arguably very, very close if it's only like five points difference. And similarly, you could say the same thing. Um, but, you know, just having that slight edge is going to be what's important. The next thing that you also see is certain times clubs are going to go negative. That's because we have to put things in place to make this happen. What we're trying to do more than anything is make it to where the correct items are falling in the places. So we have to penalize things at certain times. So we have special things in place if it doesn't have enough power, if it doesn't have, um, or if it has too much topspin, or if it has too much backspin. Well, we're not going to use those on the front tee box, for instance. So you may see that, um, you know, the ranking, you know, we had to actually penalize clubs that might artificially have things that don't really mean much. So, you know, I can go through these holes. And for instance, if I was to go to hole nine here, for instance, from the rear tees, you might see that the ranking is kind of terrible for this bag, for example. Um, however, it's doing what it needs to do because you can see that the length of the extra mile and the APOC one are going to be arguably just about the same spot, which means we were basically doing what we want it to do. But the point system isn't on a one, a zero to 100 scale. We're not really too worried about that. And I don't know if we're going to end up putting those on a zero to 100 scale because it's really not all that important. It's essentially kind of like an artificial scale anyway. There is things that we can do to make that happen, but it's not something that's a huge priority because it's basically just going to be us assigning values. If I was to just say, oh, well, this club's probably about a 55, you know, it's just me saying, oh, it's about a 55. Like the, it, the point system doesn't matter too much. It's more about the bulk scale and how the clubs rank. So on certain par fives, you'll see that some of the longer clubs, they may be favorable. So you're seeing for this hole specifically that the big dog is kind of close to the sniper. It's because top spin can be a priority on certain cases. We don't know what the wind is. And if you come in not knowing what the wind is, you know, you have to keep that in mind. So you'll see that the big dog might do good or decent on holes like this. However, as soon as we go to par threes, you're going to see big dog way to the bottom. So you need to put a lot of priority on par threes because that's where you're going to win a lot of your matches. So when you're going through these courses, looking at these guides, you want to look at all the courses in your tour and just see how they statistically rank when the par threes and those are going to be the most important clubs for you to put in your bag based on your bag so you'll also see you know as you switch the clubs you'll see that the point system you know really you know and as i mentioned two three points not going to be a big deal so sniper 10 cat 7 it's really going to be you know a coin flip however if i was to move to this hole you'll see that cat seven, because of the extra length, it's going to give just a definite edge. So you'll want to be factoring that in. And similar for the drivers, you know, length is a human, like a, a big premium. So you'll see that the way that, um, you know, the, the accuracy to length ratio starts to come into play. So do keep that in mind. Again, I'm going to be putting together more in-depth tutorials as things go along. I just wanted to at least 
put together this brief video for you guys just to know what's going to be in this update but do look for future guides because i'm going to try to break this down for you a lot better tomorrow put together you know maybe four or five videos tutorials just kind of walking you through all this so good luck i hope you guys like the new changes a lot of hard work went into all this as you can see we haven't had an update for quite some time um, these pieces take quite a bit of time to write hopefully you guys are liking the new changes and be on the lookout for future updates to come good luck everyone take care